we're going to see how to build this email that I've got displayed on the left side of my screen. Right here you'll see the donate button, some images, some text of course. Scrolling down you'll see social media icons. On the right side of the screen I've got an open browser right now to show that when I click on the donate button that indeed it does go to my donate page over here. And if I click on the main image it takes me back to the main or the home page of my website. If I click on the golf image that'll take me out to my golfing uh, page for people to sign up for my golf event. So each of the images in my email are linked back to the website or out to my social media. We've got two ways that you can start an email campaign. One is to click on the people and orgs or if it's voters if you have or donors. And I can go into my attributes and I can maybe select a particular category of people that I'd like to send my email to. And then go to my file menu, say communications and create a mass email, give it a name. And, a, uh, uh, and indicate as to whether or not I'm going to send to both email addresses and then click OK. I'm going to cancel that for the moment. Another way to do this, and it's even easier, especially if I want to email everybody in my database, is I'll collapse that menu and I'll just go right down to my email campaigns. And I'm going to say New. And I'm going to send it to everybody, to everyone. And I'll put today's date on there. And I will select this radio button which says everyone in the database. And again I'll click OK. And that brings me into my email editor. I'm going to begin my email by creating a container to hold my text and my images. That container is called a table. And in my case I'm going to create a one row, one column container. Now I could give it a border size of 1, but I'm going to set it to 0 for the time being, and I might change my mind on that later on, but I can come back in and, and uh, adjust. I want to make it 600 pixels wide. I'm going to set the cell space to 0 and the cell padding also to 0 and click OK. And you'll see a thin outline of a little um, uh, box there. It's a 600 pixel wide table. The next thing I want to do is start in and put my banner in there. Well, my banner is going to come from my images, and my images are going to be located right here, or I'm going to get to those through here. So I'm going to click on my Image Properties button, and then I'm going to browse through the system gallery for the banner that I'm looking for. Well, I don't happen to have my banner in here right now, so I'm going to go to my computer where I have got a variety of images out there, and I'm going to drag a couple in. I'm going to drag my banner in. And so now I've got banner sitting there. I'm also going to select my panda chewing grass. The remaining images that I need are already in my gallery, so I'm good to go. So now that I've got my banner in there, I will select that by clicking on the banner. Click OK. Now this banner is currently 950 pixels wide, but I said my table was going to be 600 pixels wide. And, I'm, and by the way, the reason I chose 600 pixels is because it works well with telephones. And I'm going to change this now to 600 pixels and click OK. With my banner added, now let's go ahead and add some text in here. So after my image, I'm going to press the Enter key maybe once or twice just to reposition my cursor. And I'm going to insert some text. For my purposes, the text is just random. I want to add my golfing image to the right side of this paragraph over here at about that particular spot. And I will now open my image properties and browse to my golf image. And that's a bit larger than I'd like that image to be. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And, I, and I'm using these buttons here to adjust it as I desire, up or down, 50, 10, 1, and so on. Or I could set it to a specific amount. If I wanted it to be specifically 220, I could do that as well. Now, you notice there's no text wrapping around that. So let's just double click that image once again. And this time I'm going to ask that it have be left aligned and say OK. Now, if I wanted to increase the spacing between the image and the text next to it, I could do that as well by clicking on that image again or double clicking that image and I might change the spacing out here. If I made it say 50 right now, you can see that I've got 50 pixels on each side of that image. I'll go back and reset that to 5. 
So into my random text, I've inserted a little paragraph spacing in here, and I'd like to add another picture out on the right-hand side. And I will, it doesn't really matter where you place the cursor as far as in the line, up or down will matter, but in the line doesn't really matter. I can even put my cursor right there. I'll click the image properties, choose browse, and I want to select my pan of chewing grass. And I might want to bring that down just a little bit. There we go. I did that with a negative 10 pixels, and I will click OK. And again, I need to set the alignment over here to the right side. I'll click OK, and now the text is wrapping around it. Now I'd like to add in the images for the social media icons that I've got here. And for that, we're going to be putting a table into our email. I'm going to click down here and uh, maybe even add a little bit of spacing in there for myself, just little uh, markings to know where I am on the page. And I'm going to insert another table. Now I've got five icons I want to insert. And so what I want to do is put in a one row table with seven columns in it. Now the reason for the seven is I want a spacer on the left and a spacer on the right. So I'll make it seven columns. Again, I'll set everything here to zero. Now this number here is not going to be 500 pixels, but instead it's going to be 100 and the percent sign. What that allows me to do is change the outer table size, and this will float with the width of that new size uh, if I choose to make a change. I don't have to come back in and recode all of these. I'll make the cell spacing and cell padding zeros and click OK. And again, you'll see now a little faded table in here with seven uh, blocks in it. Let's begin by placing my first image, which I will put in for LinkedIn. I'll go to my Browse, go to my LinkedIn. And I know that I probably want these to be I'm 35. Yes, 35 is the number I want for those. So I'm going to set each one of them to 35. Click OK. And I've got the first one set in. I've gone ahead and placed inside of each of the other respective blocks or cells the Facebook icon, or I'm sorry, the social media icon that I would like. Now I still have these spaced a little too far apart. I'm going to fix that by in the first block over here. I'm going to right mouse click that block, which is currently empty, click on cell and choose properties. And I'm going to set that to 20% and click OK. And you'll now see that it pushed that in. I'm going to go to the last block over here and do that same thing. Right mouse click. Make sure you're in the right block. Right mouse click. Cell. Cell properties. And again I'll make that one instead of 20 pixels make it 20 percent. Click OK. And now I've got the spacing about the way I'd like to see that. If I wanted all of these to be centered within their respective cells I can highlight them and click the center button and now they are all centered within that row. Now I'd like to add my copyright and contact information on the bottom of my email. For that I'm going to create another table and I will make that a single row, singled column table. I will let the border size be one this time just to see how if I, whether or not I like it. I will continue to keep that 100 percent. And again, no cell spacing, no cell padding at the moment, and click OK. So now I've got a box with an outline on it. I've gone ahead and typed in the text that I want to have appear in the bottom of my email. But one of the things that I don't like is it's, it's too, the spacing is too far. Every time I press the Enter key, if I open up another row for something, I get an, like a double spacing in there. Well, I'm going to fix that. By hitting, going up to the end of the line, I'm going to hit delete and do a hold the shift key down and press delete. And on Golden Valley, I'll just hit the backspace, shift delete. On an 800, backspace, shift delete. The next thing I'd like is to see this text centered within the box. So I'll click the center. And um, the box itself, I might want to shade. I'm going to right mouse click that. I'll choose cell properties. And I'm going to choose a background color and I'll select a darker gray. Click OK. Now the text gets a little bit hard to read when I do that. So I'll highlight the text and I'm going to change its text color to white. Alright, my email is shaping up. I'm going to get rid of those ones that are in there and that took out the gap. Scroll back up. 
getting pretty close. Now I haven't done any saving, so it's, I better do that. I'm going to come up to the top and say, save this. So now at least if anything goes wrong, I've captured the work that I've completed so far. At the top of my email, I do want to add in the text and the donate button. Now I could just go to the front of my image and press enter to open up some space and I could try typing in some words here and I might if I wanted them brought in space a little bit I could do that um, but I, uh, different email clients will render or make the uh, email look different from one uh, client to another so Outlook may look different from Gmail which will look different from AOL etc. So I'd like to have maybe a little bit more control over that spacing and how it will appear so I'm gonna backspace this back this out I'm going to put it in through a table again. I'm going to add another table of one row, two columns, no border. It's going to be 100%, zero cell spacing, zero cell padding. Kind of getting used to that now. Now I can go in and type in pandemonium. And over on the right side, I will add in the image for the button. And that might be a little bit large. I'm going to take that down. I like that probably a little better for this email. Now, I don't have the spacing quite the way I want it. In this cell, I want that Donate button to be pushed all the way to the right. So I'll click the Right Justify. The Pandemonium, I'm going to center justify that within its cell. But I'm also going to make that text quite a bit larger. 36 and that'll have the effect of pushing it over the way I want it. I will bold and I will set the color on this and in my case it's going to be a custom color which I've chosen from a palette and I'll do that with a pound sign and paste and now I get the color that matches my website. I want to make sure that I'm saving as I go so I'll file and save it now Trailblazer will store copies of each of those saves. So if I go up to my Saved Copies button and I take a look at my display for this first one, I can see that this one, when I first saved it, did not have any title or button on top. I'll close that one. I'll open up the display for the second. And there I do have my Pandemonium and my Donate button there. Now you'll also notice the text isn't quite the way I want it. Uh, I don't like all the serifs in there. I, I, I'm going to remove those in a few moments. But I'm able to see that in my saved copies as well. Another way to see that is to click the preview button and that will open up an Internet Explorer page here something like this where you can get a, a preview of what your, of what your uh, email will look like. I've gone ahead and entered in a couple of headings, one for golf tourney and the other for teach a bear to floss. And again, you're going to notice there's a bit of font differences here. Now I'm, now I'm going to go in and make my fonts more consistent. I'm going to highlight different sections one at a time. I'm going to select my font as, in this case, Verdana. And um, Verdana is my font of choice. You may have another. And I'm going to go in and select these as also Verdana all the way down to the bottom the text size for each paragraph I'm gonna set those to a size of 12 and in my footer I probably don't need quite that much size on those, so I'm going to maybe make those 11, just a little bit smaller than the rest. Again, I'll go back up and save. And my email starting to shape up pretty nicely. The last thing I want to do is start adding in my links for each of the images that I've got in here. To do that, I click on each image one at a time, so I'll click my Donate in this case. Select the chain link, and for my Donate, it's going to be the Donate page. A little blue outline around that tells me that that link is imaged. If somebody clicks on the image here, I'd like to take them back to my home page, so I'll come back to my link. I'll paste in, and I'm going to back off 
that part of it for that is my home page. If somebody clicks on the golf tourney, I'd like them to go to my tournament page. Paste that URL in. And if somebody clicks on my little panda bear chewing his grass here, I'd like that to go back to the home page. So again, I'll just paste in my last link and back everything up to the home page. You would do the same thing in succession for each of your social media links as to where you would like those to go. I'll save what I've got. And now it's time to run a test. For that, I'll click my test button. Oh, it's asking me for a subject, which of course I need to give it. I always try to put in a subject line that people might be interested in clicking on. I'll click my test button and I'll send it just to myself for now by clicking the uh, checkboxes off on the others and click OK. My test email has arrived, which I've placed over on the left side of my screen. And as I scroll down and take a look, it's looking pretty much exactly the way I would like it to. Um, I'm now going to make certain that all of my images are working. So I'm going to click on Donate. And that's opening up my Donate page. That's exactly what I want. When I click on the main image here, the banner image, I want that to go back to my, my main website or my home page, and it does. When I click on the golf picture, it takes me out to the golf event page where I can select my option to register for that event. And my bear eating uh, grass is also taking me back to my home page just exactly where I wanted it to go. You would do the same thing for all of your social media links to ensure that they're going where you want them to go. One thing to note about the social media is, and that is, make sure that you are logged out of each of those accounts. You might be thinking you're linking them into your account, but instead you're just bringing them to a login page. You've now completed what is likely to have been a series of tests, and it's now ready to send. I'll click the Send button on the bottom of the screen. And in my case, if I want to schedule it for some time later, I may do that. Let's set it up for Monday morning at 8 a.m. When I click OK, it'll go off to be scheduled. There's the confirmation. Click OK. When I look at that particular campaign, the one that's called To Everyone, I'll do this in date order here. This one, scroll on out and refresh. It'll show me the date that it's scheduled for. At this point, if I wanted to cancel it, I can just click on that link and say cancel scheduling to allow for further editing of the email.